In this video, we have a big update coming that includes intensifying storm systems, record heat, a strong May cold front, and even a crazy snowstorm. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday out there. How's it going? Hope everyone's having a fabulous work week out there. We got a lot to talk about into the weather department over the next five to seven days. So if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Let's first of all, take a look at the big picture this morning out here into the tropics as we've got a little disturbance. It's actually kind of forming down here off into uh, Central America. We're going to be watching this region over the next uh, couple of days. This is the what they call Central American gyra that's really starting to develop this this time of year. The hurricane season starts around June 1st. So we're going to be watching this area of disturbed weather. As same along, we've got this little strong cold front out here out into the open water. So you always have to look at these tail ends of fronts uh, these times of weir, the year as they just kind of sit there. There's the system that came through the Northeast yesterday that brought all those storms for the Northeast. And yet we have another system that's moving across in the middle, middle section of the country this morning. That's gonna bring some powerful storms to the uh, upper central plains area this, this uh, afternoon into the early evening hours uh, as we get you know past say the, like the four o'clock uh, time frame. So let's, uh, let's take a look at oh, the overall setup for today because we do have several areas of interest we've got this little cold front that's stalling out in the in the southeast it's not much cold air there guys there's a system that lifted further off to the north uh that you know is clearing out on the back side into the northeast but now all all the instability is going to be in the middle section of the country with some powerful storm systems that are going to be breaking out in the middle middle of the afternoon as well as we've got all that critical high fire danger out here into uh, west texas so they do have numerous critical fire dangers and elevated fire risk today for places into Lubbock, back into Abilene, down into uh, the Midland, Odessa area, back into uh, San Angelo. Those could be some fire risk. And as these fires uh, start to spread, uh, potentially they could actually uh, bring some like smoke and some haze actually covering portions of the Dallas Worth area and some cloud cover, not rain, but uh, just enough to uh, even keep the temperatures going up even higher than what they're already expecting the, you know this afternoon but yeah so the storm prediction center did in fact actually enhance this risk for uh today at the 8 a.m advisory into portions of nebraska here as well as into lincoln going into kansas city back into topeka as well as in lawrence uh kansas here those are the bullseye areas that could be seeing some of those stronger storms as we get into that peak heating time frame about four or five o'clock this afternoon but you can't let your guard down all the way down into kansas city missouri all the way into wichita kansas all the way up into des moines iowa into overland park as well as the springfield missouri that's another area that has a do, does have a slight risk for those severe storms and then just kind of a marginal risk as it tails uh further south say down into the uh, you know the texas uh panhandle but as we move through, some of those storms could be look, being on the, the favorable side for heavier rain over portions of the northern parts of uh, Missouri here, as well as into portions of, of Kansas and portions of Nebraska. Some of those storms could be put, picking up one to three inches of, a heavier rain as we get into the afternoon hour. So definitely be on high alert in these areas, right, especially in the yellow shaded areas. But even in the even in the green shaded areas where they do have that marginal risk for some of those heavier rains to take place this afternoon on on your uh, Tuesday. So let's take a look at temperatures because that's going to be a lot of the, the you know the headlines this afternoon as well. So I mean, we've got record heat breaking out where they do have that fire danger in place. We've got widespread 100s. Unfortunately, this area has just been bone dry. We're uh, shooting for about 97 degrees right along the Dallas area, back into uh, portions of the southeast, widespread 90s. I'm going to be lifting all the way further north and then 80s along the coast here, but all the cooler air is well to the north up here in the Pacific Northwest. We've got widespread 60s up there and pretty comfortable well to the north as that jet stream is lifting up into the Dakotas as well as into uh, Minnesota here. But for tomorrow, we've, it's kind of a calmer day. So things do kind of relax a little bit. We just have these 
meandering you know outflows and then you know warm fronts and cold fronts moving across in the middle section of the country not not much terribly too much going on 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 tomorrow tomorrow's kind of a, a respite day so for a lot of you folks the the main story is just going to be all the heat further south in fact they do have some a marginal risk for storms over portions of you know colorado springs getting into you know say the st louis missouri areas you know places into cincinnati and you know kind of Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, those areas could be seeing, you know, some stronger storms. One or two of those could be on the, the marginal severe side, you know, say just barely breaking that 60 mile per hour barrier to even qualify for, for a severe threat. But yeah, you can be on the lookout for some stronger storms as you all, all, as all the heat is just kind of well to the south. I mean, look at that, 106 degrees tomorrow in the Wichita Falls area. So that's Plenty of plenty of heat just continues to bake a good portions of the south and the south southwest. Much of California is just kind of a bone dry, so it's very easily to heat up that atmosphere. Again, all the cooler conditions are, are well to the north into the Pacific Northwest. So if you want to escape the heat, <laughs> you definitely head up there because they're still going to be experiencing widespread 50s and 60s uh, into the afternoon hours. As you can see, that boundary, again, is kind of well to the north up here in Wisconsin, as well as into Michigan here with widespread 70s and really pleasant weather into portions of, of the Ohio Valley. But as we get into Thursday time frame, things do start to get interesting again up here as kind of that ring of fire kind of sets up over over Thursday. So we do have more instability is going to be coming across this time. The severe threat has lifted further north along that warm front that's going to be isolated around that boundary there into Omaha, Nebraska, into Minneapolis, back into St. Paul, back into Des Moines, Iowa, into Sioux Falls. Those areas could be on high alert as we get into the afternoon. Not really I wouldn't say a terribly too significant tornado threat, but those could be some some pretty big you know damaging wind producers and some hail producers out there. So definitely be on high alert as we get into the afternoon hours, into the evening hours. But even don't let your guard down into portions of you know even of that marginal risk category where some of those storms could be on the stronger side. And then you just have these garden variety showers and thunderstorms, just kind of a by bubblers in the heat of the afternoon, just kind of a more of an isolated conditional threat where these um, kind of the lighter shade green area is but further off to the south again we you know we got those widespread critical fire dangers back here into Arizona back into New Mexico I just don't really see that going away anytime soon but what really stands out is this pretty strong cold front <laughs> this is a pretty strong cold front guys for this time of year for you know for May standards and it's gonna be breaking out some snow showers up here into the uh, Intermountain West. And along this boundary here, all the heavier rain is gonna be essentially you know, over portions of, of North Dakota here and far extremes of uh, Minnesota and just to the south of there, that's where they do have that severe threat. And then that little boundary that's gonna be pushing across further into Oklahoma, back into uh, Kentucky, not really producing much of anything. It's just gonna be dominating with that uh, ridge of high pressure uh, underneath. But yeah, as we transition into Thursday there, there's this there's the record heat lifting well to the north now so again widespread hundreds and 90s all the way into oklahoma getting into kansas here all the way into nebraska reaching 90 degrees iowa well into the 80s that's where they've got that severe threat just on the north of there of that along that boundary where that warm front is but again the main story is is going to be this another reinforcing shot of colder air and this is going to be on the move and this is actually going to bring the end the end of the heat wave that a lot of these areas further south has just been experiencing record heat for this time of year and you can actually see that strong cold front you know as we get into the afternoon hours you can actually follow me on facebook as well so i've got daily updates uh, on there there as uh, well but this powerful storm system will be bringing a, a a strong cold front and the temperature anomalies really drop as we get into the into the afternoon hours and you can definitely see those you know widespread 10 15 if not 20 degrees below average in some of these areas in Colorado could be 25 to 30 degrees below average but out ahead of it there's the warm sector so you got all the instability out ahead of it so you're still going to be even of the day into your friday afternoon going to be experiencing those well above average uh, temperature anomalies 
But yes, we could be looking at that storm threat extending further ahead of that boundary. I don't think the cold front actually makes it, say, through Dallas until Saturday afternoon. But out ahead of it, on Friday, we could be looking at some stronger storms moving back into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. That extends all the way into Springfield, Missouri, all the way into portions of Illinois here, going all the way up into Milwaukee, uh, West Wisconsin, with some stronger storms in the heat of the afternoon. So it's going to be right along ahead of this in that warm front, and that cold front is going to be in the northwest of there. So yes, those stronger storms setups could be under under the gun as we get into the friday afternoon uh time frame and there's the flash index so, so the dry line is going to be active out here in uh, west texas that's finally going to be on the move but that's going to bring the storm and all the instability further off into the to the uh, uh, east there as we get into the peak eating hours this is about four or five o'clock in the afternoon we could be starting to see some strong thunderstorms starting to erupt out here in West Texas. This will slowly shift and it's gonna be tapping into that energy and that's gonna be breaking out numerous showers and thunderstorms. And I think this boundary here is just kind of fill in as we get into the evening hours but out ahead of it, there's the kind of the popcorn variety storms you're going to be dealing with in portions of the southeast on the day on a Friday. But underneath that, before that, man, look at this, guys. I mean, underneath those 20, 25, 30, if not almost 35 degree below average temperature anomalies for this time of year up in the higher elevations, we could be looking at a pretty significant snow threat coming back in for the Colorado uh, mountains there and some of that snow could actually shift into portions of uh, Denver there but some of these areas in blue there man that's going to be some some pretty heavy snow for uh, for this time of year I mean you're talking right now you're you're in the 80s I mean you're in the 80s but by the time we get into Friday afternoon into the you know Friday night time frame Saturday morning time frame Yes, you could be looking at some pretty heavy snow into portions of the Colorado Rocco Mountains here, even extending into portions of Denver. And you can actually see the temperatures as you wake up on your Saturday morning there, May the 21st. Yeah, we're talking freezing temperatures in Denver, folks. I mean, we're, we're talking <laughs> low to mid 20s back here in uh, Steamboat Springs and the Edwards there, back into Gunnison with the freeze. So plenty of cold air underneath it's not going to last long it's a strong cold front it comes in and it comes out pretty quick but it's going to be packing a punch with some very heavy snowfall um, along its way in fact the latest european guidance has about six inches of snow by the time we get into friday afternoon saturday morning time frame i mean castle rock back into colorado springs up you're calling up to possibly a foot of snow so there's gonna be some boundaries here that could be looking at some isolated pockets of a good six to ten inches if not more up here into the the rocky mountains so but man i think the gfs is definitely way too bullish on this system i mean denver is not going to get 18 inches of snow that's just not going to happen guys <laughs> so i think that yeah the gfs has kind of lost its rocker here on this latest update but uh, i'm more in line with the the european on this one I mean, I, I could I could see two to four inches in uh, Denver, but in a little a little higher amounts into the up into the higher elevations of Colorado. But we ain't seeing uh, you know a foot and a half in in the Denver Metroplex. That's, that's just not that's not happening. <laughs> but it's gonna be cold. There's no question, guys. There's there's definitely it's no question. It's gonna be cold up there with those 20, 25, if not up, upwards to even higher than thirty degrees below average temperatures. And you can see the sharp gradient to that 20 below average temperatures in Oklahoma, getting into uh, Kansas there, back into Missouri. Uh, this is this won't be in the day until the day on uh, Saturday there, but well ahead of there. Yeah, look at all the record, you know, all the heat just lifting all the way up into the Northeast by then with all those plenty of, we're talking 90s by the time we get into the into Saturday time frame up here into the Northeast. And you can see those, those temperatures climb as we get into uh, Saturday already but this is till sunday you can actually see the strong cold front coming through finally on sunday bringing goodbye to all the 90s and the hundreds back here in uh, texas so this is going to be a, a fairly welcome system so some of these areas say in dallas is going to be reached 90 degrees for 14 days in a row when your average high is 83 for this time of year so that it's been plenty warm so 80 degrees is going to feel 
really nice <laughs> and, uh, in Oklahoma and, and uh, Arkansas and, and much of much of Texas there. So definitely be, you know, waiting for that strong cold front by the time we get on to uh, Sunday. But here's here's the overall precipitation uh, for the next kind of seven days. And so you can see it's all the precipitations really well to the north off the Pacific Northwest underneath that. It's just bone dry up in California, Nevada, much of Southern Idaho here into Utah, back into uh, Arizona and New Mexico with all those wildfires really well into the West Texas. It's not really gonna be seeing much of anything. It's not really until they tap into those systems and once they get past uh, east of the Rocky Mountains here, you can see that snowstorm back here into Rocky Mountains here, but all the instability is gonna be in the, in the midsection of the country with those numerous systems gonna be coming across pretty much all week long. And then we'll have to be watching the tropics as we got some uh, little bit of instability that could be pinwheeling across into uh, Florida here uh, with some you know elevated rains coming back into that region, especially as we get deeper into the, into the weekend. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm